Hello and welcome to the video. This video is all about how you connect up your HDFPV goggles and it's kind of the same interesting whether or not you're talking about something like the DJI system or the Shark Bite system. Both of these provide a much superior image, much superior, much better image than traditional analog FPV. But how you connect them up to the flight controller is something that's often skipped in an awful lot of videos. And when I was first starting with the DJI system in particular, it took me a couple of tries to figure it out how to get it all working properly. So this video is for you if you have invested in either one of these systems and you're about to pop it on your model and you're not sure exactly what you need to do in Betaflight or iNav or how you do that little bit of wiring, this is going to take you through it. Now you don't need a flight controller in order to use these high definition FPV systems. You can just put them on whatever model you want and you will still get all of the lovely pictures. However, both of these systems also use an on-screen display that's generated within the system itself rather than on the flight controller to give you key information. Things like battery status, current draw, GPS, latitude, longitude, distance, direction to home, milliamp hours consumed. All the kind of interesting things that you need to know to make sure that you don't go too high, too far or fly for too long and drain the battery. And that's the bit that I'm really going to focus on in this video. Now the wiring itself isn't too tricky and is kind of covered in the manuals for each of these systems. I must give a shout out to Fat Shark at this particular point. Their manual for the Shark Bite system is far better than the little thing that you get uh, with the DJI system. It explains exactly how to do all this, including how to set up all the ports in things like iNav and Betaflight. But the wiring in terms of the main power and the connection to the flight controller for both systems is pretty much the same. For the DJI system, let's do that one first. The first thing you do is connect the black and red wires to the battery power, anything between 7.4 and 17.4 volts. Check the particular specs for the unit that you're using, as well as the full-size DJI Air unit. There's also the Cadix one as well, which is a slightly smaller unit. And then you have two other wires in the wiring loom that are to go to the receive and transmit pins on the flight controller. The big tip is that the receive pin at one end has to connect to the TX pin at the other end and vice versa. If you don't get that the right way around then the on-screen display won't work but we'll come back to that in the troubleshooting section in a moment. On the DJI system because it's a two-way system that also includes radio control there's also two extra wires and those are the ground and signal wires that you connect into the S bus input onto your flight controller. The DJI system actually supports two speeds of SBUS. Uh, the basic one is the one that pretty much everybody supports. So in terms of the wiring, it isn't particularly tricky. There's only really four wires to connect for basic operation and the extra two if you also want to use the DJI uh, controller like I do. Let's talk a little bit about the system for SharkBite. Now SharkBite doesn't have the radio control portion, it's purely an FPV system to send it back to the goggles and the wiring, surprise prize, is exactly the same. You have the power and ground wires that you connect up on one of the boards to the battery power and then the other two pads, and again beautifully covered in the manual, are the two that you connect to the UR on your flight controller. Again, swapping them over so the transmit pin on one side goes to the receive pin on the other and vice versa. So the physical connections are really straightforward. There's nothing particularly tricky to get you to the point where you're ready to do the software configuration. So let's talk about that next. Now there are a couple of common elements in iNav and Betaflight that you have to do that might not be obvious because what you're doing is you're sending out uh, telemetry over those two wires that you've connected up to a spare UART on your flight controller. Um, do you need to turn on screen display on? Well, actually, yes, you do. You need to tell the flight controller that it needs to send on screen display uh, telemetry information to the system that you're using. So you need to make sure in the configuration tab that the OSD switch is turned on. It's going to be turned on by default, but make sure you don't turn it off because you think, oh, I don't need that because I'm not using the onboard OSD stuff on the flight controller, keep it turned on. 
Second thing is then go into the on-screen display tab as you would normally and move the elements around just to get everything set up exactly the way that you want to. There is a slightly more limited range of elements that both of these systems support. They don't support the full range that you get on analog FPV at the moment. That's another good point. Make sure that you're always keeping up to date with the latest manuals and notes online for these two systems. As I'm recording this, this information is correct, but as further updates come out, extra functionality may be added. So I've dragged the pieces that you want into the positions on the screen. Those positions on the OSD tab will also drive the positions of how they appear in the HDFPV image that you're going to get in your goggles. With that done, then we need to send the telemetry information or something called multi we Serial Protocol or MSP for short out into the system so that that information, that telemetry that's been sent from the flight controller to the HDFPV system can then be used to create the beautiful on-screen display bits that you want in your image. Now to do that in the Beats Flight configuration, go into your ports tab and select MSP for the UART that you have that receive and transmit wires connected to. Beta Flight has a more basic setup of multi we serial protocol and that more basic setup is something that everybody understands. If you're talking about iNav then it's a little bit more complicated potentially because iNav has much more stuff that it supports and at the moment things like DGI don't support all the extra on-screen uh, pieces of information that iNav supports. So what happened is iNav created two settings for this, uh, one being the MSP setting, which is the standard multi we serial protocol that iNav uses, which is a superset of the stuff that's in beta flight because you have all those other kind of bits and pieces to do with navigation and stuff that iNav can do that beta flight can't. But if you're plugging in something like a DGI unit, then rather than select MSP, you're better off selecting DGI FPV VTX on the port that you have selected. And what that does is that then, rather than use the superset of the MSP telemetry information, which will just confuse the DGI system, again, caveat, 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 this may get fixed in the future, it'll just send the more basic beta flight style MSP to the goggles that they'll understand. And that should be it, it should be set up. In terms of troubleshooting, if you power it up and it doesn't work, then there's only really a couple of things that you've probably got wrong. The most common is that you've got the transmit to receive and receive to transmit wires accidentally in the wrong ones. It won't hurt anything if you've got them the wrong way around, but if you set all this up and your on-screen display still isn't appearing, then just swap the wires over and try it again. And then, of course, if it's still not working, just try those other three things that I've talked about. Make sure that OSD is turned on in the configuration tab. Move the elements that you're interested in into the positions that you want uh, in the on-screen display tab in Betaflight or iNav. And finally, enable the right style of MSP telemetry in the ports tab for the UART that you have the system connected to on your flight controller and that's either going to be MSP if it's something like beta flight or it's going to be the DJI FPV VTX setting in iNav if you're using the DJI system with the iNav on the flight controller. So hopefully that helps those of you that were interested in trying to figure out how this all works. Um, it's really, really straightforward and simple. If you followed those bits of advice, you should find that you have an on-screen display and you're flying and get the critical information that you need to fly safely. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.